So, essay style is the next thing which you really need to master in order to produce the perfect area of study essay. So there are a number of sub-elements which we really need to examine in order for you to have a sophisticated and really solid essay style. So, the first question which you must ask yourself is, am I going to be using first person or am I going to be using third person? Now, third person is a requirement of formal style, so it's definitely what you want to be leaning towards. This means that you're going to be saying things like, one can see that, rather than you can or I can. So it's really stepping out of the essay and allowing the essay to speak for itself rather than transferring your own personal views through language. So while first person isn't necessarily used in most essays, first person or third person can be used if it asks for a personal response. So this is if the question is specifically asking for your view on your area of study. And that's obviously where in the exam, you snap into action and switch into your first person response. Second issue is grammar. Now, it's really important to be accurate with grammar because while it's something which we often forget and which we think is only for primary school students and unimportant, it's something which is really so important in the foundation of your essay. Because if you use incorrect grammar, the marker is really going to take notice and deduct marks possibly based on the sophistication of your style. So this means that you need to choose between past and present tense and then maintain this throughout. So for example, if I open my essay with Shakespeare uses, I'm going to be sticking with Shakespeare uses throughout the essay. If I open it with Shakespeare used, I'm going to be sticking with that throughout the essay. However, present tense is preferable because it's a more sophisticated way of expressing the way that while the author itself might be dead, the techniques in the text remain timeless and still relevant. So that's why you want to be sticking with the present tense. The third issue is sentences. Now there are a lot of issues within sentences which you need to be juggling at once and while they may seem to be contradicting each other, it's really important that you master this sentence style. So you want to be using sentences which are varied in length. So a short sentence, then a long, then a medium, then a long, then a short. This provides a bit of variation in your text, in your paragraphs which you're producing. And make sure the marker isn't bored reading your paragraphs due to the fact that it's just one same sentence produced over and over again. However, if you do have problems with accuracy and expression, you should definitely shorten your sentences because this provides a really easy way of increasing your clarity and therefore getting your ideas across to the marker. You want to be using things like dashes, colons and semicolons. This is examples of punctuation which can clear up your ideas and can reduce long sentences and provide more ample meaning to the marker. You don't want to be using ellipsis which is the dot 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 and also things like parentheses, which is the brackets, because this is an indication that perhaps your essay isn't as formal as it should be, and that you're resting on an informal and conversational style. You also want to be asking yourself whether you're going to be using an essay approach, which is integrated or block in style. Now you've obviously never heard of these styles, and in later videos we're going to be examining how exactly you write these in proper detail. But basically, to summarise, block essays mean that you're looking at one text per paragraph in an integrated and logical fashion. So for example, um, you're looking at text one in your opening paragraph, text two in your second paragraph, and then text three in the next one, and then perhaps repeating that all over again. So it's splitting up your texts and studying them separately. This is obviously contrasted to your integrated approach. Now your integrated approach is where you're looking at multiple texts in one paragraph. So as a student, you need to decide which of these approaches best suits your essay style. It's not recommended that you use the integrated response until you really have mastered that style with a lot of practice essays because it's quite difficult to achieve and can lead to waffling, poor structure, an untraceable argument and also a lack of detail. Basically because you're trying to juggle so many texts within the one paragraph, 
you're not getting the textual detail, the quotes, the language techniques and the effect, which we've discussed, it's quite difficult to get all three of these factors for all three texts in one paragraph. You've just got too many competing ideas, which is going to make your clarity non-existent. So, you're asking yourself, how can I ensure that I answer the question? Now, this is something which I've been going on and on about. You don't just have to produce a good essay, you have to produce an essay which answers the question. Because even if you produce a good essay which perhaps you've memorized at home and then just regurgitate onto the page, if that doesn't answer the question which the exam is asking, you're not going to get the good marks which you deserve. So, in your introduction, you need to be providing an orientation of your argument, question and opinion. So this is just really going to be bringing the marker immediately to your ideas and your response. You also need to give an introduction to your text, specifically unrelated related material, which your marker might not specifically understand, or obviously they probably have come across it before, but they might not have a detailed knowledge of the specific elements of that text. So you want to orient them to that text. You also want to be listing the points of your essay, and this allows the marker, as they're reading, to follow your argument and as they read through, to have a better understanding of what direction your argument is heading in. We then get to the body of the essay. Now, it's a bit interesting to think of the body of your essay as the vertebrae or the backbone. So basically what you have is all the paragraphs, which are the specific vertebrae, making up the one unit of the back and providing what we call a pathway of proof. So this means that each paragraph will address a new theme. So this means you're not constantly repeating yourself and you're always ensuring that you have fresh material and quotes with which you can use to impress the marker. The body paragraphs have a very strict, formulaic and repetitive structure. And this is going to lead to a really clear argument. Using sophisticated language within this structure will ensure that it's not going to get boring for the marker to read. So you really get the best of both worlds, combining a formulaic structure, but also one which is made interesting through descriptive language, techniques, and really just a sophisticated language tone. You want to be including one to four quotes per paragraph and making sure that these each provide different techniques. So if you're using four quotes in one paragraph, you make sure that all four of those quotes weren't metaphors, for example. You'd make sure one was a metaphor, one a simile, one a personification and one alliteration, for example, to show the marker that you have a really across the table grasp of different language techniques. You then need to make sure that you link up your paragraphs and this is a difficult skill which we're going to be looking at in our later videos. We then get to the conclusion. Now, as we've said before, the conclusion isn't merely a summary of your essay, but instead it really wraps up and brings to the end a really solid argument through combining this into one succinct paragraph. So what you want to do is to be able to show what your argument is and then prove your philosophical point through backing up your theme with specific references to your text. The texts are merely evidence and examples in your main argument. So what's really important to think of is your essay isn't actually an essay on your texts. It's instead an essay on your area of study with your text just as evidence in proving your point. You want to make sure you leave the reader with a message. For example, the importance of belonging to society. For example, if my area of study was the migrant experience, my end of the day message might be the difficulty which migrants have coming to Australia and the way in which I think their experience should be improved. So really just providing a sophisticated way of ending an essay. You also need to demonstrate, perhaps if it's relevant, how the theme has changed over time. This might be particularly relevant if you're looking at texts which are set across very different time periods. So you really need to demonstrate the way in which perhaps belonging has or hasn't changed for humans in your different texts. You also need to provide your personal response. However, this doesn't necessarily mean including I in your vocabulary. It just means stressing to the marker your argument. Music